In one scenario, gravity pulls the universe back into itself, similar to air being let out of an inflated balloon. The universe goes back to its original size. This is the big crunch. It would be the end of the universe and a big fireball as all the matter collapses onto itself. That would be pretty dramatic. You got to think of the singularity basically as a sphere, as a ball. And then a shape charge goes off, and what you have is an expansion that takes place. An expansion automatically suggests that the things that you've seen in three dimensions has a fourth dimension, because the fourth dimension is how far away you are from the singularity. And that relates to the time from the big explosion, how far you have moved, each ring being, say, a second or a minute or an hour or a day or a month or a year, each ring is suggesting that the basic unit of stuff you're dealing with is the same. The difference is you are farther away from the singularity. And therefore, the diameter of the space you're living in is bigger and bigger. Until, of course, a decision has to be made by creation on whether or not to allow the expansion to continue. In time, if you allow the expansion to continue, you are destroying everything that's there. Because in any system, which relates to the word stem, as in stem cell, anything that gets further and further away from the other parts in the system is basically losing its contact, losing its gravity, losing its attraction. And allowed to continue past a certain point, there is no longer a system. Mm -hmm. There are only parts by themselves flying around. And if, a, say, the Earth was far enough from the sun that the sun could have no effect on it, then it dies. cannot act as an Earth because it requires you know, water and heat and all of the things that come from being in orbit around the sun. So at that point of transition, which I suggest we're at now, creation must make a decision. And that decision basically is, okay, everything I put in the singularity has been expanded to its maximum without destruction taking place. If I allow it to go further, it will destroy itself. And therefore, should I, in fact, reverse the process? And with each ring of time passing, begin to decrease the space between the parts, in the end, what will happen is a return to the concept of the singularity through a process they call the big crunch. That's what happens in a fruit tree. You, you basically create a tree from a seed, but the end product of the tree is a fruit that brings a new seed that starts the process all over. It is the seed that was planted in the ground plus the lessons learned from the time the seed expanded into a plant, turned into a tree, grew and made leaves and, and fruit mm. that made another seed. So the seed that you get from a tree is a, an improved version. Now, the word improved is a little stretched here because if you have, for example, the best corn of all growing in the world, say, would grow in Iowa, and you take 
the seeds of corn from Iowa and you bring them to northern Ontario. You will plant that seed in the ground and it will not give you the quality that you get in Iowa because the quality of the final product is not solely the product of what was in the seed, but it's also the product of the environment the seed is now living in. The environment in northern Ontario being windier or colder or shorter growing season or what have you is going to be different than the one in Iowa. However, if what you do instead of growing the plant in northern Ontario for the purpose of eating the corn or whatever, you grow it as a seed farm, then you have taken the best of Iowa, you put it in the ground in northern Ontario, and from what grows, you take the best there is and put them back in the ground. And those things will give you a second version of growth, which you can take the best of and put back in the ground. And finally, at one stage of the game, what was a great seed in Iowa becomes a great seed in northern Ontario, adapted to the conditions of northern Ontario. So it's a process. In life, it's the same thing. You have the birth of a child. It lives its life. It dies. If its DNA is reincarnated, reconstituted, it lives a second time. It receives a different social engineering because it's moved up in time from where it was the first time, and therefore the lessons are different. The job that creation was attempting to do is similar in many ways to what creator has done, and that's reincarnating human beings so that they can grow a second or a third time. The difference is the timing. Everything in the world requires a very specific period of learning before the process of dying, putrefying, and reconstituting itself, reincarnating itself begins. What the creator has done is hijack the process and put things back in motion out of timing. You know, even if you ask a comedian, what's the most important part in telling a joke? Timing. (laughs) It's always timing. It's not the word. It's not the deed. It's not the action. But it's the timing that has to be perfect for it to be funny. To other people or you know any other artist uh, can have their art looked upon as useless if it arrives in a time that is not ready for that art so creation is the only place that has the schedule the timing and therefore creation must be allowed to choose when it is time, say, for a hermaphrodite to give birth to genders as opposed to a clone of itself, not somebody else imposing a new schedule, because that schedule will always be out of time. If the root's out of time, then the entire tree is out of time. And what if a tree began to start growing in midwinter instead of spring? The effect of the weather on it would basically make sure that its life is shortened. So the key word in all of this, Jerd, is timing. Then there's the big chill. The universe expands until the nuclear furnaces that power all the stars burn out. The universe grows cold and dies. A second possibility is actually kind of sad. The universe will continue to expand forever and it will just grow into an 
increasingly cold and lonely place as the expansion removes our nearest neighbors from us and we just end up a single isolated community of stars and galaxies. Then again, there could be a much more spectacular end in which everything is ripped to shreds down to the last atom. Think of it like a balloon that is filled with too much air. It pops. It's much more dramatic than the big chill and just as fateful as the big crunch. The universe continues to expand, but at an ever quickening pace. And in fact, the pace is so great that even the space-time fabric cannot hold the universe together. 